Hi everybody. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about out-of-home advertising or outdoor advertising. Um, I'll go through some of the different types and categories and subcategories of out-of-home. Also, we'll go through some uh, creative tips on, as, from a copywriting and art direction standpoint and some of the things you want to consider in terms of how you integrate outdoor advertising into a broader multimedia or integrated kind of campaign. Uh, an an out-of-home ad will be one of the required ads in your integrated campaign that's coming up in a couple of weeks, so that's part of why I want to talk about it here so that you can already be thinking of this as one of the media that you've got to figure out how you inter integrate it with your, with your overall campaign concept. On mm -hmm. Thursday, we're also going to be doing a, a lab uh, dealing with billboard advertising where you're going to create a billboard and I'll show you how to um, uh, how to put that into a mock-up because that's one of the tools that that I'd like for you to be able to have is a little bit more in terms of how to use mock-ups. So out-of-home advertising, uh, while we think of it as billboard advertising and poster advertising as, as kind of the default, it does include a lot of different subcategories. Uh, transit advertising, so on taxi cabs, buses, uh, in airlines, uh, airport terminals, and things like that. So there are a lot of different parts of it, grocery carts even. Uh, the kiosks, do you remember those? Kiosk advertising was really popular for just a few years right before the um, smartphones made them made kiosks pretty much obsolete. You still see a few kiosks, but the idea of the kiosk was uh, these would be placed in pedestrian heavy shopping areas and you could come up to the to a touch screen and interact with this kiosk to find out where uh, where different kinds of businesses and things were. So obviously the uh, you know Google Maps has is pretty much um, eliminated the need for this kind of advertising, but it does help illustrate the idea that that out of home advertising is often called directional advertising because it reaches people when they are outside the home, when they're out and about, and they are likely to be spending money while they're while they're out moving around, particularly on impulse purchases. Major types of out of home. If you look at this and, and think about what, what's going on currently with the coronavirus, my guess is that out-of-home advertising is probably the area of advertising that's going to be most impacted by the, um, the stay-at-home orders, by the, um, the economic downturn, and things like that. Because you look at all this, the billboards and posters, you know, there's much less traffic out, there's much less um, desire for advertisers to be placing those kind of messages out there, and, and, the, um, and the rates for those need to be tied to traffic counts that, uh, in terms of how many people are going to be seeing the ads. And obviously that's going to be a lot less uh, when most people are staying at home. But uh, in-store point, point of purchase, that's also down. Sports stadium advertising, that has probably dried up. Um, for the year. This pie chart that I'm show you, showing you is kind of typical data from 2018 in terms of the percent of expenditures for out-of-home advertising and, and what makes up this whole share of out-of-home advertising, uh, you know, the whole advertising budget. Transit advertising is going to be going lower, bus shelters, all of these are going to be uh, probably tremendously uh, negatively impacted by the coronavirus this year. And while we think of out-of-home advertising as generally being 2D static ads, there's actually a long history of out-of-home advertising being uh, being moving, being animated with real people. So this goes back to the dates of, of the town crier back in the colonial periods where the town crier would be standing on the corner and giving the news of the day and in addition telling people what kinds of things were available in the markets for sale and things of that nature. Uh, this image is of what's called a sandwich board advertisement and you can see why it gets the name. Somebody's just walking around with a board on their front and their back and they're kind of a walking billboard. Um, kind of a current version of that would be here with the, uh, the Donner kebab in a costume going out and giving out free samples. The general strong points for out-of-home advertising, um, it's always there. So no matter what time of the day or, or what day, uh, if you are out and about, that ad is going to be visible to you. So they, they always, uh, the out-of-home industry always talks about it's advertising 24-7, 365. Uh, reach and frequency tend to be very high on, on both components of those. 
um, for out of home advertising. And that's simple. So if you buy a 100 GRP, which would be considered a full showing uh, in, a, uh, in a particular market, the average reach for that is about one per person per month. And that's simply a function of the fact that we tend to travel the same routes over and over and over. So if you buy a 100 GRP where you're going, where you, um, where you're guaranteed or, or, or statistically you're going to get everybody in that market, they're going to see that same ad over and over and over again. So this is one of the reasons why we talk about uh, out-of-home advertising being something that needs to be, from a creative standpoint, something that will not wear out quickly. Often humor is a very good approach to that because humorous ads don't tend to wear out as fast as, say, serious informational ads do. Okay. Uh, geographic demographic flexibility that is getting better as there's more targeted um, data available. In fact, a lot of what the out of home uh, industry is doing now is using um, is using geo marking and data from uh, data from your traveling habits that uh, that they are able to glean to figure out where people are going and, and then trace that back to homes. And that's not at all scary, is it? Uh, so there, there is a lot better geographic targeting than they're used to. But in general, for most out-of-home advertising, especially things that are going to be highway billboards, you have to figure that anybody could be exposed to that message. Disadvantages of out-of-home. While anybody could be exposed to the message, their exposure is generally very brief, just a couple of seconds. You know, think about when you're when you're out driving around, um, you're obviously scanning the environment. The billboards that you see, you are probably only going to attend to them for a couple of seconds. So we have to be able to write messages that can work in that time frame. They can't be complex. They can't be a lot of information. There's no chance for rehearsal and things of that nature. Context effects. I think I talked about context effects uh, earlier in the semester, but this is the idea where the surrounding environment can influence your attitude about the advertising. And so negative context effects can certainly come into play with, um, with out-of-home advertising if it is not precisely targeted. Um, for instance, if, if the out-of-home ad is for a luxury car and that's placed in a um, you know, very uh, rough, low-income kind of area, that kind of, that kind of juxtaposition can create a ne negative context effect and negative attitude on the part of the consumer. Validity of the audience measurement has always been an issue with outdoor advertising. This isn't a media planning class, so I'm not going to really get into that factor, but just be aware that uh, a lot of times the, uh, the audience numbers for out of home need to be kind of taken with a grain of salt. Low availability uh, is also an issue, and that sometimes contributes to the negative context effects because you don't always have the opportunity to place the ad exactly where you want it to be. Um, you know, communities and cities uh, are often quite restrictive of, of how much outdoor advertising they will allow, how many billboards they allow to go up. And so a lot of times you have to reserve outdoor advertising months and months and months in advance. And so it doesn't necessarily work for real timely announcements, for, for things that you have to get up quickly. Um, you know, there's, there's just a very limited inventory of outdoor ads that are, that are available. Uh, poor audience attitudes. Uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of outdoor advertising that maybe isn't very good, that some people find offensive, and you don't have the opportunity to unsee, um, uh, you know, an offensive outdoor ad. And, and you think about, you know, people are driving around with their, with their children and things like that. You can see why people sometimes have a fairly poor attitude about outdoor advertising. And then there's the clutter, right? Because this is what a lot of places look like uh, in terms of, this is a, this is Beirut um, and it's the uh, Beirut, Lebanon. And this is the, uh, the highway that goes from the airport into downtown. And it's a very, it's a gorgeous um, view of the Mediterranean Sea. And then as you look up into the city, instead of seeing all the beautiful buildings and everything, basically you're seeing a collection of signs. Um, that kind of thing happens a lot. This is a, uh, a street in Houston and you see a lot of signage and that's just that all of that kind of contributes to negative attitudes that people have about outdoor advertising. 
Now I want to talk a little bit about some of the special effects that you sometimes see used in uh, in outdoor advertising. First two special effects are extensions and sequences. Extensions are when you have a billboard and part of the ad breaks outside of that uh, that rectangular width by height dimension. So in this case, we you know this is a pretty good example because the the extension there helps emphasize the size of the uh, of the T-Rex there. So that's what's called an extension when something breaks out of that two-dimensional rectangle. For billboards, those extensions are almost always to the top and to one side. They're seldom to the bottom because that's where your scaff scaffolding is and they don't tend to work as well. Okay, here's another example of the special effect, and this is uh, this is an extension, but a kind of a specialized uh, form of an extension that's called a, an extrusion. Extrusion is three-dimensional content, so that's coming out in front of the in front of the billboard instead of just breaking out of the uh, uh, of the two-dimensional rectangle. So a lot of people still call this an extension, but technically it's it's an extrusion. Okay, other special effects would be the sequence. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, this is an image from the recent film uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and uh, it shows a very simple form of of the sequence kind of billboard where you see the first message raped while dying, and then the second and still no arrests, and then how come uh, Chief Chief Willoughby. The sequence billboard is essentially the same uh, same idea as what you get with a lot of animated internet advertising where um, the message plays out over a period of frames. In this case, with a sequence billboard ad, the message plays out kind of over a, a period of distance. Okay, uh, one of the most famous uh, camp advertising campaigns in U.S. history was a sequence um, billboard campaign or small sign campaign for Burma Shave. These started, I think, back in the 1940s, and here's an example of one of them. And each one of these panels would be a separate sign. So the first one you would you would drive up, you would see this uh, this little red sign uh, by the side of the road. It would say her chariot, and then a couple seconds later, you'd see the raced 80 per, they hauled away what had been her, reference to the allusion to the uh, famous movie of the time, and then always ended with the Burma Shave logo. They got fairly scientific about that. They would, uh, uh, they would distance the panels, the subsequent panels on each one, based on the speed limit in that particular area, so they would know exactly how many feet to put between, between each sign. Okay. There's another one, a man, a miss, a car, a curve, he kissed the miss and missed the curve, Burma shave. A lot of times they had, uh, like these first two messages, they had kind of a public safety about safe driving uh, that was kind of uh, put into the, uh, into the silly little poem. Uh, here's another one, the wolf is shaved so neat and trim, Red Riding Hood is chasing him. And here's one more that's a, not a Burma shave, but this is a safe driving ad uh, out of New Zealand. And so you see the first panel is of the little boy when he's a toddler, and then he's getting older and older and older. And then the type, the message comes in the last two panels, and it says, uh, don't let your life uh, rush, bef uh, flash before you and slow down. Okay, other kind of special effects. There are screen rotations. Uh, you see these a lot on um, uh, on freeways around Southern California. These are generally now digital billboards. They used to be mechanical, but uh, digital billboards where just a, a new ad comes up every six to eight seconds, and they may have four or five in the rotation there, and uh, you know before they would start to repeat. And it's based on you know how many you're likely to be exposed to when when that billboard would be in view when you're on the on the freeway. Spectaculars uh, is the traditional t term for big lighted displays and billboards. And so here's an example of Times Square in New York City. If you've never been 
you got to go sometime. It is so much fun and so just electric uh, to see uh, Times Square at night and all the spectacular lighted billboards. Many of those are now video, um, but they've always been very flashy and, and, and very fun and just really in your face. I think it'd be really cool now to be able to be a photographer in New York City, be able to go into Times Square at night now and see, uh, see what this all looks like without, without people. Uh, spectaculars have been around though for for quite a while so that Times Square one that was a fairly recent image uh, here's one from the uh, the boardwalk in Atlantic City New Jersey from 1929 and so this is uh, an ad for General Electric and it's basically just their logo at the end of the pier but you can see the bank of, of floodlights below it there so this was taken during the daytime and then this is what it would look like at night. So if you were walking along in the 1920s uh, and saw this, that would be a pretty spectacular image to see and, and would be quite memorable, I would think. Video billboards. Uh, we're starting to see more of those. There have been uh, some playing in, in Los Angeles this spring. I think we'll probably start to see more of those as time goes on, but the video board, billboards are what they sound like. There's, there's a video playing or animation going. Um, you know, certainly there are some, some possible issues about them being distracting to drivers, uh, but as, you know, if the cities in the, uh, are going to allow them, I think uh, you'll see a lot of advertisers who would want to use them. Uh, another kind of special effect is called the building wrap um, billboard, and that's what a building wrap looks like. It usually goes around uh, two sides, or at least turns the corner. In this case, uh, this one for NBC, people can upload their pictures, and so this is a digital billboard on a building wrap where these images can change and people can, uh, uh, people can see themselves on the, on the billboard. Uh, another example of a building wrap. This is uh, for Heineken. You can see the hand coming out, so this is a building wrap with an extrusion uh, that works pretty well. Uh, aerial advertising as a subcategory of out of home. Uh, we've all seen the uh, the planes uh, flying along the beach areas in, in Southern California with messages on them. Uh, that's a traditional kind of, of aerial advertising, but you also have things like balloon advertising. Uh, here the more traditional plane carrying a banner. Uh, the blimp advertising uh, is, is another form of, of aerial outdoor advertising. So from a creative standpoint, the most important thing to remember is that consumers are likely only going to see your billboard for a couple of seconds. The second thing to remember is, based on the reach and frequency data that we know, they may only see it for a couple of seconds, but they're going to see it today, tomorrow, the next day. They're going to see this over and over and over again. So you need to come up with something that the message can work very quickly and yet something that's going to be interesting enough, entertaining enough that people won't mind seeing it on a repetitive basis. All right, so in terms of copy, be succinct. The rule of thumb is about seven words per billboard. Now, if you ha count the logo as maybe one of those words, maybe you're using a theme line that might be another three or four, you can get down to where you've only got a couple of words that you, can, that you have to be able to write a headline. So you need to be able to write billboards in really just, you know, two to three words is perfect, but try to keep your total number of, of words in the billboard to around seven. Um, and so that's why you really do have to be succinct. You may not be able to use a theme line on all billboards, or sometimes the billboard is just an image and the theme line instead of an additional headline. In terms of type, um, billboards are not the place to get too cute because you, you don't want to use decorative typefaces. You generally just want to go for legibility. Now that's generally true with any kind of integrated campaign that you're going to use a legible typeface for your display type. So in the cases of for your integrated campaign, you will pick up whatever your display typeface that you're using for headlines in, in other media, and that will probably be the typeface that you should use for your billboards. Typically, you'll use one single dominant piece of art um, and crop in close, make it big, crop in close, rather than using multiple pieces of art in the same billboard. 
Uh, complementary color schemes tend to work better. They're, they're higher contrast, they're higher uh, noticeability than subtle um, analogous or harmonious color schemes. So you typically will use bright colors, primary colors, and contrast them. Make sure your logo or the branding or the, or the packaging is big enough that it can be recognized on just a fleeting glimpse, can be recognized from a distance. Make one point. Uh, that's true of most advertising, but it's especially true if you only have seven words to work with. So, you know, keep it simple, keep it clear, uh, keep it fun. See if you can come up with visual concepts. They tend to work very well, but also keep in mind that you need to keep your visuals fairly simple. So those two, those two ideas will sometimes um, kind of work in conflict. For multimedia campaigns, which is what you'll be doing for your integrated, um, sometimes the, the function of the billboard is simply as support advertising, and so you see a related image that you would recognize as being part of the campaign, and then you will use whatever theme line and the logo, and then that may be it. That may be all there is to that particular billboard ad. Okay, transit advertising, another subtype. That's where you're placing ads on or inside mass transit uh, vehicles. There are a lot of different examples. Kind of our uh, typical um, default idea of what a transit ad looks like is just a small sign like on a taxi cab or a bus. And, and oftentimes those are kind of like um, mobile business cards. Uh, so a lot of the transit advertising kind of has a, has a reputation for being fairly dull and boring. Doesn't need to be. So here's bus advertisement for Axe with a wrap on the bus and kind of fun. Right? Uh, for careerbuilder.com, maybe nobody ever thought about putting the ad on top of the bus before. Right, here's another one for um, you know those, uh, those shuttle buses that uh, if you've bought uh, an, an airline ticket on one of those airlines that uh, doesn't pay the, the airport enough to, to have an actual gate, uh, and this is what you get, so you put an ad on, the, uh, on those luggage holders. Um, this one I think is fairly clever. It's for uh, United Airlines, and it's promoting uh, Newark, which is one of their hubs, uh, Newark, New Jersey. And so what they have are... Um, electronic displays on taxi cabs that are linked to GPS and so wherever that taxi cab is in New York City it can show you the amount of time that it would take you to get to JFK versus the, the amount of time that it would take you to get to the Newark airport where United has their hub. So it take time, time to fly United out of Newark. Uh, the only downside to that is you have to go to Newark. There's a traditional outdoor ad just for fun. Um, now I'm going to show you a few international billboards and signs, uh, just also kind of for fun, but these are some, some shots that I've taken on, uh, on different travels. This is a Kia ad from Dubai. Uh, one of the things I always thought was interesting about the advertising in Dubai is that there was a, everything uh, seemed to have a very luxurious feel to it, so uh, even Kia uh, looking like a luxury car there. Here's another one from Dubai for Okay, for more luxurious product. Um, here's an ad for McDonald's. This was also around Dubai. And this is, a, this is a good example of things that you will see in other countries where you will often see just really unusual shapes and sizes for billboard ads. And I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that um, it's just not as standardized and may not be as regulated. And so sometimes there are opportunities to do, you know, like a super horizontal like this particular ad. Or this one, which was uh, a, a whole building ad for United Arab Bank. And when I first saw this, I thought that was a projection. But as I got, you know, close enough to get a picture of it, I really believe this was a this was a wrap, kind of like a cellophane wrap that wrap that was translucent, so the people inside those windows uh, could still see out. But this is kind of like a uh, a whole wrap uh, going up the entire length of a building there. Here's one from uh, Doha, Qatar, where I used to live. And this is an example of what's called a scaffolding advertising. You don't, I don't know that I've ever seen one of these in the US, but I've seen uh, several of these in the Middle East. And uh, 
it's it's called a scaffolding because there's a whole bunch of scaffolding behind it that holds the thing up. You can see how large it is in relation to the uh, the semi truck there. So these scaffolding are usually uh, located on corners of really busy intersections. You can see there's another one there to the far left, and they're uh, they're customizable, so they can be kind of rebuilt and reshaped to whatever the concept is. And this is an ad for Vodafone, which is the one of the bigger uh, cell phone networks uh, in, in, in the Middle East. This is, these two signs are examples of another format of international billboard. You don't see these in the U.S. very often. Uh, the closest thing that, that I kind of see in the U.S. to this would be some of, the, uh, uh, some of the small billboards that are in shopping malls, that are in pedestrian areas. But these would be located on busy highways but, uh, but placed in the median. And they're a small billboard. They don't take up a lot of the view of the cityscape, uh, but they're still noticeable and they're vertical, which is uh, also a little unusual for billboards. In places like Qatar, what you would see is, uh, so this one for KFC, you would see the Arabic version, and then a little bit farther down the road, you would see the same ad, but in an English version. Here's some signage that I, that I saw in Irbid, Jordan. Irbid is a city in the uh, northern part of Jordan near, near Syria. Um, Obviously, a little bit of trademark infringement there, but uh, you see a lot of that in, in many developing countries as well. And one for In-N-Out. And it's not just burgers, it's burgers, hot dogs, and more. So who knew that in the Middle East that hot dogs are on the In-N-Out secret menu? Uh, this is in Myanmar, uh, Kubota. Very proud of the uh, number of different bulldozers and things they have for sale. Uh, another one from Myanmar. Here's another uh, set from Irbid, Jordan. And so this is an example of pedestrian, another pedestrian size billboard. These are horizontal. You don't see very many of these in the U.S., but you will see some, particularly in, um, in the northeast part of the country, in some of the um, major metropolitan areas. And these would typically be located in, in um, parts of, of the city that would have high pedestrian traffic. Uh, this Oreo ad on the left is, is kind of kind of funny because when you first look at it, you try to figure it out and it doesn't make any sense. But if you remember that Arabic is a right to left reading, le reading language, then it does. So it's Oreo plus milk equals happy. City center advertising is, uh, is another type of uh, kind of like spectacular. So here's uh, Hollywood and Vine. Uh, here's another one of Times Square in, in New York. Like I said, you got to get there if you ever have the chance. And then here is Piccadilly Circus in London. So that's the, the British counterpart to Times Square, but obviously since it's British, it's, it's a little bit more state and, and understated. Okay, I want to show you a few examples of what I think are fairly creative billboard kinds of ideas in which you're kind of... Um, working the creative concept into the special effect or into the technique. So here's one, an ad council one, stop the text, stop the Rex, um, and the, uh, the airbag uh, is, has text to deploy, so the, the concept is kind of all wrapped up in, uh, in the visual there. Another one for, uh, for McDonald's on the Big Mac, and that works really well, that they took up two billboards, but it doesn't need a doesn't need a headline or anything to say anything about the size. Um, the concept works there with the, the extrusion and the two billboards. Chick-fil-A has probably done outdoor advertising as well as, as probably any brand in the U.S. Um, for a long, long time. Um, this campaign was created by the Richards Group out of Dallas, and it it's really run long. It's, it's, a, it's a campaign with legs. People just seem to like the, uh, um, you know, the poor spelling from the from the little cows and uh, and the three dimensional uh, cow statues that are always placed on there um, tend to work very well. So there's another one. Um, that first one didn't even have any Chick Fil A branding on it, and you recognized it right away that it was a Chick Fil A ad, right? See no, hear no, eat no. 
food friend. And we see you, burger eaters. There's another good example of using the special effect to help illustrate the concept of the strong teeth. And another one here of the folding to, uh, <laughs> to kind of illustrate the concept that tailgating isn't worth it. Here's one for Lego where the billboard at first looks like it's a window through the rest of the street scene, but it's actually Legos that have recreated the street scene that's right behind uh, the billboard sign. And then interactive billboards. Uh, you don't see these real often, but when they do, you can see why, why they're kind of appealing and why uh, brands would like to try them once in a while, because it's the idea, if you can get people to stop and actually touch your billboard or, or interact with it in some way, uh, it's something that they're probably much more likely to remember, but also post on social media and things like that. And so you can get a little bit of extra run uh, on billboard ads like that. All right, that's it for today's lecture. Um, on Thursday, we'll meet with a short Zoom session to go over the, the lab on producing a mock-up uh, for a billboard. And then we'll also talk a little bit about the integrated campaign on, on Thursday. So see you soon. Mm -hmm.